This is a short video on what it means to be uh, compact in a metric space. So what's a compact metric space? And uh, so the idea, I'll tell you what a compact subset of a metric space is first. So if B is any subset of your space X, then a collection, fancy A, of subsets of X is called an open cover of that subset B if two things happen. So you've noticed I've used that adjective open cover. That means that every element of this collection fancy A ought to be from your topology. So the, the collection A itself should be a subset of the topology. And then number two, which is the idea of cover, and what that means is that the union of all of those sets in your collection A, they should contain B as a subset. And so in my picture over here to the left, you see that the green set B is contained in the union of a whole bunch of orange sets. And so those orange sets, again, are part of my cover. And so cover means exactly like it sounds like those sets cover B. So let's look at maybe an example that maybe we're familiar with. So if our space X is the real numbers with the usual topology on the real line, so like, you know, regular open intervals with parentheses on the endpoints, and let's take B to be the uh, interval from 0 to 1, and let's let fancy A be the collection of all open intervals where the left endpoint is 1 over n and the right endpoint is 1 plus 1 over n. Then I claim that that is an open cover for B. So how would you show that? I just want to show you that you have to check 1 and 2 above in the de definition. So for number 1, um, notice 1 over n, 1 plus 1 over n with parentheses on the left and right. Well, that's got the form a comma b with parentheses on the left and right. So I know that's uh, the usual topology on the real line. Um, those sets a comma b form a basis for that topology. So therefore, each one of these blue sets is a member of the usual topology on the real line. And so what that shows then is that uh, every possible element of the blue set has to be in the regular topology on R and the usual topology on R. So number one's good. Now we'll try to check number two. So why should B, which in this case I've, I've labeled as uh, pink in this case, why should that be contained in the union of a bunch of elements of uh, the big fancy set A? So how we would show that then is, well, let's pick, let's pick an element of B. Let's, let's let X be in 0, 1. So let's think about some stuff that we know about the real numbers in this case. So what do we know about the real numbers? Well, there exists a natural number such that 1 over N is smaller than that element x. And uh, if I was to draw you a picture there, what I'm saying is, we've well, got an x somewhere, you know that there exists a natural number so that one over n is to the left of x. And so think about this interval then, from that one over n to one plus one over n. We'll notice that x is contained inside of that blue interval now. So uh, what did we just do? We just showed that no matter how you picked an x in b, you could always kind of construct a blue interval that's from your fancy collection there. So you could always find a regular A and fancy A, such that little x lives in regular A. So since you could do that for all x, uh, what you could do now is you could say that the whole pink interval there from 0 to 1 should be in the union of a whole bunch of these sets that look like 1 over n, a whole bunch of sets that look like the 1 in blue. So if you could do that for each x and A, you can have one of these blue sets here. So take the union of them all, and you ought to contain the whole pink interval. So that finishes that fancy A is an open cover of B. So the next important definition that we're going to look at is the idea of what it means to be compact. So a subset C of a topological space, X, with topology T, is called compact if any open cover of C has a finite subcover. So what on earth does that mean? So let's take a look at an example. So let's pick this set A, B, C, D, and let's say its topology is this one over here. So empty, just A itself, B, C, A, B, C, and X. So I have one, two, three, four, five things in that topology. I claim that, say, this subset here, B, C, is compact, that it satisfies this definition. And I picked this just so I can talk about what does this mean up here. So why is B, C compact? So what we need to show is that uh, any open cover of C has a finite subcover. So, well, in our case, let's let fancy A be any open cover of B, C. So what do we know about fancy A? So if it's an open cover, then fancy A satisfies those two things like we just talked about. Fancy A has to consist of things from the topology from here. And then also BC has to be contained in the union of stuff in fancy A. Um, now think about part one for this part here. 
T only has five things in it. Therefore, any subset of T has at most five things in it. So uh, what does that tell me too? Also, the union of uh, elements from fancy A, I'm only taking unions where I'm only using at most five distinct different subsets, right? So the idea is, I don't, it's not possible for me to have like a union of infinitely many different sets. At the end of the day, I'm only taking the union of at most five different things. And that's what we mean, that's this finite business here. Can you reduce that union so that you're only taking the union of finitely many things at a time? That is maybe how to translate this idea of a finite subcover. And so in this case, we're saying, yes, we can, since we're only playing with a finite number of subsets to begin with. So there's nothing special about BC in this case. So BC is compact, but you could have done that same kind of argument for really any one of the subsets of X that you would have liked. Uh, and in fact, any finite topological space, no matter what the topology even is, is going to be compact. So maybe let's look at a more interesting example. So let X be just the real line with the usual topology, like we talked about earlier. Well, then 0, 1 is not compact. So how would you show something's not compact? So what you need to do then is you need to show that there exists an open cover. You need to show me a specific open cover that cannot be reduced to a finite subcover. So here's an example. So uh, this is kind of similar to the cover we talked about in the beginning of the video. So let's let A be the collection of all sets whose left endpoint is one over N and whose right endpoint is one minus one over N. Then I claim that there is no finite number of these sets that would be enough to cover zero to one here. I would need to use infinitely many of these sets in order to cover zero one. And so let's talk about why is that true? So maybe a proof by contradiction might do it for us. So by way of contradiction is what that stands for. Let's suppose that you did only have finitely many sets that looked like this. And let's suppose that that was enough to cover zero one here. And uh, so what would that mean then? Well, I know that each one of these A's, or if you want to write them this way, each one of these A's, they look like this. So it makes sense then, so I'm saying that here, let's say AI is one over NI, one minus NI. It makes, uh, it should make sense to say that relabeling if necessary, I'm gonna look at the uh, one of the A's, call it AK, the last one relabeling if necessary, where that is the smallest left endpoint. In other words, that, that is the endpoint that's closest to zero. So let's pretend that one over NK is what's closest to zero. Well, we'll kind of maybe draw our picture like we had before. Maybe I'll try to get to that picture somewhere. But there exists M that should be even smaller than one over NK. In other words, we could find a natural number so that the reciprocal is even closer to zero than one over NK is. And so what would that mean then though? That means that that number one over M is not contained inside of this interval, right? We're saying this number's to the left of this endpoint, so he's not in there. And so hence, if this is the farthest left that I go for any of the capital A's, that means one over N can't be in the union of the capital A's. But wait a minute, one over M is definitely in this interval from zero to one. So what we've done is we found a point that lives, from zero, lives in here from zero to one, but does not live in the union of these things. So how on earth is it possible up here that the union of only K of those things covers zero one? And I think I've got a picture for you in a second here. So zero one's not compact. And down here what I'm saying is again, if you assume that one over NK is the farthest left you go, you've got some space there between zero and one over NK, right? And so the point is that can always happen. There's no way, there's no one number here where that'll be the farthest left that I go. I'm always gonna have some space in between here where I can make an argument kind of like I did. And again, that convinces us that there's no finite number of these green looking sets that'll cover that whole interval from zero to one.